Founder of the Pacific Media Centre, Professor David Roby, will have his latest book launched at the AUT Library next Thursday. The book focuses on media and human rights in the Pacific, issues which he is passionate about. I'm Monique McKenzie and Professor Roby joins me this afternoon to discuss his work. Thank you for coming in today, Professor. Great to be here. This is your 10th book. What is the book about and how is it different from the last one? Well, I guess it's uh, something of a sequel uh, to a book I did in 1989 called Blood on Their Banner, National Struggles in the South Pacific. And that was very much around my reporting as a journalist in the region at that time. Uh, and, of course, a lot has actually happened in the Pacific over the years uh, since then. Um, and then I, s- I switched into journalism education in uh, 1993. And so it was quite very interesting sort of looking back at uh, what I'd done uh, as a journalist around the region. And then I was uh, reflecting about that and uh, looking at various um, methodologies and ways we can approach journalism in the region. And mm-hmm. so this book sort of synthesizes all that, you know, a relationship between the actual reporting and then, uh, you know, about going about doing journalism in the Pacific. John Pilger has said your book allows us to understand the Asia Pacific at a time of renewed Cold War ambitions and dangers. What is he referring to? Well, of course, um, back in the 1989 book that I did was very much in the heat of the um, um, Cold War, uh, if you can call it the heat of the Cold War, um, but very much the Cold War between uh, uh, the Soviet, then the Soviet Union and the United States. And the Pacific nations were used as pawns uh, in this Cold War. And now we're starting to see something develop again, uh, particularly with China. Uh, China is one of the major um, aid uh, countries in the region, has considerable influence in uh, China, uh, sorry, in Fiji, um, and that is actually um, sort of renewed uh, U.S. interest in the region, and now there's growing competition between the two countries. So um, John is really referring to the tensions that are also building up internationally with the Ukraine and so on, and how this might spill over uh, Mm -hmm. to the remote Pacific region. Why do you think it is important that New Zealand reports on events happening in the Pacific? Well, because we get caught by surprise when coups happen in countries like Fiji and then there's a 10-year civil war on Bougainville and, uh, you know, ethnic um, uh, struggle in um, Solomon Islands and we don't know much about it and we think, well, why? Why Why is this happening? Uh, And this is largely because uh, we don't actually have much reporting about the Pacific apart from, uh, uh, you know, major uh, cyclones uh, and disasters, Um, but very little uh, reporting on the events as they happen and giving some interpretation in the Pacific. What is the biggest barrier that journalists face in the Pacific? Uh, Well, essentially, uh, various forms of censorship uh, and a climate of censorship which creates uh, uh, an attitude of self-censorship among some journalists. Uh, Fiji is a good example of this because... um, you know, in quarter of a century, we've had four coups um, and military uh, regimes for various periods. Um, even though after the original coups in 1987, we had um, the coup leader, uh, Sitovina Rambuka, becoming elected as the prime minister. And now we're about to see probably Bainimarama, um, Rear Admiral um, Avolek Bainimarama, becoming uh, an elected prime minister later this year in September. But um, in the process of that, After the coups, uh, in recent times in Fiji, there was actual military censorship in the newsrooms. The soldiers uh, basically sitting in the newsrooms, looking over the shoulders of uh, journalists. And you can imagine what sort of um, chilling um, sort of atmosphere that creates. Journalists get very nervous about what they can do, and especially when you've got laws that have very draconian uh, punishments, uh, such as massive uh, prison fines and uh, uh, and a a massive... uh, you know, jail sentences um, and uh, hefty fines and, of course, uh, fines against their uh, media companies as well. So this is a huge threat um, that journalists in Australia and New Zealand very rarely face. It's, um, it's baptism by fire, you know, if you're a journalist in the region. What have you got planned next? Oh, I've got another book planned, <laughs> but I won't tell you too much about about that at this this stage. Um, this one uh, certainly has uh, taken quite a quite a bit of an effort, about three years now, to to um, uh, produce it, um, and I'm hoping that it'll be very useful for um, journalism schools around the region. Thank you very much for coming in. That's all we have time for today, Professor. That was great talking to you. Thanks very much.